good news across sports. I'm Miss Mandy. I'm the children's director here at Lake of the Woods Church. And it's great to have you with us here today. Once again, I have my friends Pastor Adam and our mascot for good news across sports, Ole! Are you ready for cheer and basketball today, Ole? Uh, I don't think I, I don't think I'm gonna participate today. Wait, what? You're not gonna participate today? Why not, Oli? I, I, I didn't have fun yesterday. You didn't have fun yesterday? Well, why didn't you have fun, Ole? Because Coach DeMarco... Yeah, Coach DeMarco, the football coach. He wanted me to do the football drills the way he taught us. But I wanted to do them different. You wanted to do them different? I, I had I had a way that I liked better. You had a way that you liked better, I see. So, you thought of a better way to do football drills than the high school football coach, Coach DeMarco, who's been coaching football for a long, long time. And he taught you one way to do them? Yeah. And you wanted to do them a different way? Yeah, and he said, no! He said, no. Okay. Well, that just doesn't sound like Coach DeMarco. I, I don't think I've ever heard him yell, but you know what? Maybe you wanted to do things one way. But here's the thing. He knows the best way for you to do things so that you can learn to play football at your very best and so that you can do so without getting hurt. But, but I like my way. You like your way better? Yeah. Well, all I need remind me of today's huddle time and the Cain and Abel and be sure to listen to you today when the teenagers are talking about one way to come to God. Well, let's get ready to have some fun activities, okay? Okay. Hey guys, thanks for joining. I'm Kerry O'Neill. I work with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and today we're talking basketball. I started playing basketball when I was in the seventh grade. I played middle school, then I played high school, and I had the privilege of kind of fulfilling a dream. In high school, college and university coaches started coming to my house, sitting down in my living room with me and my mom, asking me would I play basketball at their school, and I had a chance to sign up a college scholarship and I grew up poor and and college was kind of out of reach and so that was a dream fulfilled and then I had a chance to a few years later sign my name to a professional basketball contract and fulfill that dream I've played in 11 different countries and basketball um, has been a great resource for me I, I've enjoyed it and I uh, hope you do too we're gonna do some drills today and they won't make you a great player uh, watching this video won't make you a great player. You probably know that. Maybe you're disappointed hearing that. Um, but if you practice them and you work at that, you ab absolutely will improve and get better. And that's what you need to do is work on being the best version of yourself. And so um, what you're going to see today in the film is some, uh, we're going to see one coach and myself and then two girls age 10 and 11 who are actually playing basketball and they're doing the drills with us. And so you'll get to do it along with us. I hope you have a good time. All right, it's time to do some drills. And all you really need is if you're inside your house, you definitely need your mom's permission. Um, you need a flat surface because we're gonna do some 
uh, dribbling, some ball handling stuff. Um, a few of them you don't even really need that, but if you go outside, maybe you have a driveway, a sidewalk, and even if it's not paved, it's just dirt or grass or something, kind of hard to dribble on that, but the flatter, the better. You don't want a bunch of rocks or something. Also, if you have a basketball, um, that's great, but you might not. You might have some crazy supermarket fancy design ball. I don't know what that's for, the swimming pool maybe. Um, an oversized kickball and my favorite color of pink, not so much. Um, a little inflatable soccer ball, a little like dodgeball like you play with in your PE class. Even a football you could use for not dribbling because it's not round, but for um, some of the ball handling stuff, you know, going around your waist, you still get the hand-eye coordination stuff. So use whatever you have and you're going to see some drills that are simply going around your leg, trying to go faster, keep your eyes up. I'm looking at the camera, um, not at the ball, but when you start, start real slowly, get the hang of it. You're only racing against yourself. And I like to say this, mistakes are not tolerated, mistakes are mandatory because you want to make mistakes. I know that sounds crazy, but here's what I mean by that. I could probably do this all day without a mistake, but I'm not really improving because I'm not pushing myself to go faster. So as soon as I do, I've already made a mistake, but that's good. I keep going and I made another one because I need to practice, but work Take your time, but then keep doing it and you'll get better, you'll get faster, and again, be the best version of yourself. Who you're gonna see is Coach Wayne Vi. He has coached high school, middle school, and then travel basketball for both boys and girls. And then his daughter, Mackenzie, who is 11 years old, and her teammate, Addison, who is 10. And you're actually gonna see two young girls, maybe your age, um, doing these drills with you. So grab a ball, get ready, let's do this thing. Get a little good little warm up right in front, uh, right in front of us. And throw a tip, tip, tip right back and forth. Nice, nice eyes on me. Good. Now above your head, up high. Fingertips, fingertips. Nice. And down low. And up. And down. And up. And down and out. Arm straight. Arm straight. Arm straight. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Good. All right. Around your head. Around your head. Slap for your nose and your neck. 
nose and knit, round your waist, around your waist. Nice eyes on the camera, eyes up, eyes up, I like it, so I can see your eyes, I like it. Now your knees, now your knees, put your knees together, eyes up, I like it, very good. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Reverse, change your direction, go the other way. Nice. Here we go, one leg out, let's go fast, quick, quick. Oh, there you go. I'm gonna try to do like, I want you to do like 20 of each of these on each leg, around your waist, whatever it is. Switch. Good. Good, good. All right, figure eights, figure eights. To the leg, to the front door, there you go. Eyes up, good. Scoot over a little bit, Mackenzie. Scoot over, there you go, perfect. All right, reverse, go in the back door. Go around the back door. Nice, all right, get back together. Let's go head, head, waist, knees. Head, waist, knees. So down your body and back up your body. Good. Here you go, a little challenge. Here you go, Mikhail, a little challenge. Two leg, one leg, 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 two legs, one leg. Nice, two legs, one leg. Mikhail wants to try it, I like it. Kenzie, I like it. Two, one, she's stepping back, you step back, step backwards, then you go around the one leg. So it's two legs, then step back, and then one leg. There you go, Kenzie, but step backwards instead of forward. You got it. She's stepping backwards, yeah, step backwards, good, step backwards, good, all right, how about another challenge, here we go, how about the, uh, it's called the gallop, it sounds like a galloping of a horse, you take the ball, you're going to take it between your legs, you're going to switch it, and bounce, switch, and then you're going to go around all the way circle, yeah, McKenzie, If you see Michaela switching it, and she's slapping in front, slapping behind. You go a full circle around your body after you switch it, you go full circle. All right, another challenge. Mackenzie, Michaela's gonna go around her waist while she's doing the ladder. So she's doing the ladder, and she's doing, so you can combine some things, doing both. Put in the footwork together and control. It's in a great way. Always combine skills. Great job. Good job. Now let's do a little last challenge here too. You can find a friend, your mom, your dad. Turn and face each other. We'll do winner, winner, chicken dinner. So face each other. Face each other. Face each other. No, towards me so we can see in the camera. All right, here you go. Put the ball in front of your stomach. And you're going to put the, and then what we're going to do is you're going to go around your waist 10 times. Every time you slap in the front is one. And then the first one back to the stomach. Locked up on your stomach is winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right, so ready, set, go. One, two, three. If you drop it, just get it back together. And say winner, winner, chicken dinner. The first winner, winner, chicken dinner. I'm uh, so many words. Uh, here we go. One more time around your knees. Let's do another one around your knees. Put the ball in front. Oh, didn't say go yet. Ready, set, go. Push yourself, push yourself. Good, good. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed your workout and had a great time with I'm Mr. Devin. I'm Mr. Adam. And I'm Miss Ari. I'm Miss Polo. And I'm Miss Lily. And let's get started with a song. The same song we got started with yet last time. Let's go. Let's do it.
Another path trying to finish. Ready, set, go. The race is now beginning. My soul's on fire, here, working out my spirit. If I live for Christ, that's how I'm winning. Entering the race, I can't compete. But the only competition I have is me. The goal is truth. The goal is knowledge. The goal is love to be strong and solid. And we are winning. Achieve it. If you want our best, we are running. Believe it. Again, it's success. We are racing and chasing. We wanted to win. Reach the goal. We are champions. Now we are winning. Achieve it. If you want our best, we are running. Believe it. Again, it's success. We are racing and chasing. We wanted to win. Reach the goal. We are champions. What's up guys? Welcome back to Day Good News Across Sports. I hope all of y'all had a great day yesterday. So our old word of is God's way is the only way. But today our new word of is have faith. So when I say word up, I want everyone to yell, have faith! Have faith. are going to have a prayer time. Where have you seen a sign like this before? You may have seen a sign like this at the end of a street or where many streets meet up. Drivers are supposed to stop when they see this sign, but if they don't, then other, other cars get hit and people get hurt and it makes them very sad. God wants you to stop and pray every day. Let's do that right now. Dear Lord, thank you for today. I hope every kid takes this information with them and that they will have the rest of a good day. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Who's ready for another song? Everybody stand up. Song time. Word up. Have faith. Come on, guys. I know you're louder. Word up. Have faith. But I'm not the only one who can do word up. Mr. Adam can do a word up. I could. Word up! Half faith! Half faith, alright. Next up, we're gonna do one way. Ephesians 1, 7. 
Did you guys know that Jesus died on the cross but came back to life three days later? He came back to life to take the punishment for your sin. What is one example of sin? That's right, it might be stealing a cookie without asking first or hitting your brother or sister. Sin is anything we think, say, or do that does not please God or breaks God's law. That is called sin, and sin deserves to be punished. Jesus made the only way for sin to be forgiven. Ephesians 1, 7. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. Ephesians 1, 7. Good job, guys. Hey, boys and girls. Have you ever seen a one-way sign before? Well, if you have, you know that it's on the street and it keeps cars from going the wrong way. If someone goes the wrong way on a one-way street, then they could get very hurt or get in a car accident. You see, boys and girls, there's only one way to get to heaven, and that's God's way. And today, we're going to learn about someone who did not go that one way and what happened to them. You see, boys and girls, a long, long, long time ago, the first people were created, and those people were Adam and Eve. And you see, boys and girls... God loved Adam and Eve. He loved them so, so much. He walked with them and talked with them. He spent every part of the day with them. And they loved him too. You see, boys and girls, just like God loved Adam and Eve, he also loves us very much. He loves us and he created us. That means that he created you too. And in verse John 10, it says, In this love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be with us. You see, boys and girls, God loved us before we ever loved him. And he loves us so, so much. You see, the important thing about God is that he never sinned. That means that he's holy. And that also means that he can never be around sin. Even though we are sinners, God still loves me and you. Just like God loved Adam and Eve. You see, boys and girls, but one day, Adam and Eve did something very bad. They sinned. And that meant that they could no longer be around God. So they had to leave the garden. But you know what? Even though they had to leave the garden, God still loved them very, very much. He blessed Adam and Eve with two boys. The first boy was named Cain, and the second boy was named Abel. Adam and Eve loved their two sons very much. But you know what? Even though they loved them so, so much, God loved them so much more, just like he loves you, too. You see, boys and girls, as they were growing up, the boys probably asked their parents about what it was like in the garden. And you know what? The parents probably sadly told them that it was wonderful and perfect and that they never had to work ever. The two young boys knew what it was like to be in the sun and work hard. Can you guys work hard with me like you're planting the fields, like with a hoe or planting some seeds? Good job. They knew how to, that they had to work and they knew what it was like to be hot and tired. And they were very sad when they learned that they could never be in the garden again. You see, as the boys grew up, they began to pick what they would do. You see, Cain, he became a gardener, and he grew lots of fruits and vegetables so that his family could eat them. They probably very much enjoyed the fruits and vegetables that he grew. And Abel, he laid, raised livestock. He laid, raised lambs so that they could be eaten by the family too. He loved his lambs very much and all the sheep. He took very good care of them. And you see, as the boys grew up, they often saw Adam and Eve give sacrifices to God. The sacrifices showed that they trusted that one day God would send a savior. You see, boys and girls, just like Cain and Abel saw their parents giving sacrifices, and they too one day gave sacrifices, they trusted that God would take away their sins one day. And that's what the sacrifice showed them. Just like Cain and Abel and Adam and Eve believed that God had a one way for them, God wants you to believe that his one way is true for you too. You see, Abel and Cain had faith in God. That he'd do what was best for them. If you have believed in Christ and God as your Lord and Savior, you can trust that they'll do the best thing for you as well. In John 14, 5, it says, If you love me, keep my commandments. This means that if you're a child of God and you love God, then you will love others to keep his commandments like he asks. You can love God by praying to him, by following his commandments, and by reading your Bible and pray, reading your Bible often to know what he wants you to do. Doing what God wants shows your love for him, just like he shows love for us, and just like Cain and Abel, Abel were trying to do when they gave their sacrifices. You see, what happened was, when they had to give their sacrifices, Cain went out to his garden. He got lots of fruit and vegetables that he was going to give to God. 
But Abel, Abel went and he got a perfect lamb. And he brought that as his sacrifice to God. But the thing is, boys and girls, the perfect lamb was what God wanted. He didn't want fruits and vegetables. He asked that a perfect lamb be brought. So Cain did not go God's way. God tried to go his own way and come to God in his own way. And you know, going our own way, that's called sin. Sin is anything we think, say, or do that does not please God or breaks God's laws. Can you guys say that with me? Sin is anything, anything we think, think, say, or do that does not, not please God or breaks God's, God's laws. laws. That's right, boys and girls. And you know, the sad thing about sin is it separates us from God. Some examples of sin might be hitting your brother or sister or stealing or lying. Or even thinking about doing these things are a sin as well. You see, sin makes us want to go our own way instead of God's way. Everyone has sin. I have. Miss Ari has. You have. Everyone has. And in Romans 5.12, it says, Therefore, just as through one man entered the, and entered the world, and death through sin, and thus, thus death spread to all men, because all have sinned. This means that because sin entered the world through Adam and Eve, we have all sinned. Sin separates us from God, and because we want to go our own way. You see, Cain wanted to go his own way when he gave the fruits and vegetables to God instead of the lamb. You see, God was very pleased with Abel's sacrifice, but not with Cain's because Cain had gone his own way. Cain became very upset with God, and God asked Cain, why are you upset? Cain told him that he was upset because he was not accepting his offering. God gave him a second chance to give him the right offering. But you know what? Cain didn't want to do what God wanted. He still wanted to go his own way. You see, boys and girls, just like God gave Cain a second chance, he also gave us a second chance. There is only one way to be forgiven of our sins, and that is through Jesus, God's Son. You see, God sent his son Jesus to live a perfect life here on earth. But one day, after he had grown up, he willingly died on a cross and so that we could be forgiven our sins. And when he was on the cross, he bled, and that blood cleaned us. For in the Bible, it says there can be no forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood. 1 Peter 1, 18 says, Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold, but from the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish or without spot. This means that because Jesus came and died for us and he bled, that we can be forgiven our sins. And this was our second chance that God gave us. But you know the amazing thing, boys and girls? That after Jesus died, three days later, he rose again and now lives in heaven with God. And you can too. You just have to accept his one way. And that's through believing in Jesus. You see, Cain was giving a sec given a second chance too. But he didn't take the second chance. And he did a very bad thing. Instead of giving the sacrifice God wanted, he instead, one day when he was out in the garden, him and his brother, he killed his brother because he was angry. He did a horrible thing. And God asked him, he said, Cain, where is your brother? And Cain said, I don't know. Am I supposed to take care of my brother? Give me your confused face like you don't know where someone is. Good job. You see, Cain acted like he didn't know where his brother was and what he had done, but God knew. God told Cain, you, I know what you've done. Your brother's blood cries to me from the earth. And then he punished Cain. He told Cain that he would have to roam the earth forever and never be able to plant a lot of crops. He, the, but the most sad thing was that Cain had to leave the presence of God. This meant that he would never be around God again. This made Cain very sad, and it also made his parents very sad, Adam and Eve, when he had to leave. You see, even though Cain had done all of these bad things, God still did one last thing for Cain. He put a mark of protection on Cain so that whoever found him wouldn't kill him for what he did to his brother. You see, boys and girls, Cain had the choice to go God's one way, but he didn't. Just like we had the choice to go one way, too. You see, in John 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This means that if we believe in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, he can take away our sins. This means that we have to believe, admit that we are a sinner, and believe that he is the one and true way to be with God in heaven forever. If you believe Jesus can take your sins away, and he is the only way, then you can one day be in heaven with him. Now, I'm going to pray for us and you guys at home. And I'll, so bow your heads and close your eyes and take off your hat if you're wearing one. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for letting all these boys and girls watch our five-day club videos. I hope that they're having lots of fun, and I hope that if they feel like you want them to accept your great gift of salvation, then they will. Amen.
You see, boys and girls, if you do want to accept this gift of salvation, then you can look for a link below this video that leads you on how to do it. Thank you very much. Wow, that was a really great lesson. Thank you, Devin. Now we're going to learn a new song that we haven't done yet called the Karate Song. So for this song, we start in our favorite fighting stance, and we sing the words, I will call upon the Lord, then you yell and go, Hi-ya! and change to a new stance. And you say, for he is worthy to be praised. And then you change again. Ha! I will call upon the Lord. Ha! For he is worthy to be praised. Ha! And then we go, Hosanna. And then you go, ha! Blessed be the rock. Ha! Ha! Blessed be the rock of my salvation. And then you turn your arms into a cross. And you do that again. Hosanna. Ha! Blessed be the rock. Ha! Ha! Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Can everybody do that with me? I think so. So get in your favorite karate stance. Ready? I will call upon the Lord. Ha! For he is worthy to be praised. Ha! I will call upon the Lord. Ha! For he is worthy to be praised. Ha! Hosanna! Ha! Blessed be the rock. Ha! Ha! Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna! Blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Very good, guys. Thank you for singing. You guys can have a seat now. Hi, boys and girls. I hope you remember our missionary story from yesterday, because that's where we are going to pick back up from. You see, if you remember, Eric Little had decided not to run on Sunday because it was the Lord's Day. He was criticized by many people. He was even criticized by the king of Wales. Who said that their only chance or, or his only chance to get into the olympics was to do the 100 meter race but eric literal he didn't care he only cared about one thing and that was what god thought and so he signed up for the 200 300 and 400 meter races instead on the day of the race everyone thought that he would not do well at all because he had never ran in the 200 300 and 400 meter races but you know what boys and girls when he got there he did so well everyone was so astonished he not only did well in him, but he actually did better in the 400 meter race than he ever did in the 100 meter race. Everyone was so confused and they didn't understand what was going on with this young man and how he was so capable of running so fast. But what astonished people even more was the fact that he was a Christian. Many people after the race and during before races and even when he wasn't even near a racetrack would ask him about God and Christ. And he wouldn't even bat an eye. He would teach them about God no matter where or when. And many people actually ended up coming to Christ through him. But you see, boys and girls, one important thing that happened is that after Eric Little's race, they had a very important race or after race dinner to congratulate him. And at this dinner, he stood up and announced to everyone, I am going to be a missionary to China. Many people were astonished. They were like, why do you want to go to China? Well, what many people didn't know is that he was actually born in China. His parents had been missionaries from China too, and he had a heart for the people of China. He told them he was going to go to China and be a missionary and teach many people about God there, even though there was a war going on. But you know what? Eric Little knew that God would take care of him. And so even though many people were nervous for him, and he might have been nervous himself, he still went. So you know what, boys and girls? If you want to figure out what happened once you went to China, you have to come back next time to find out. I hope you had fun doing the ball handling stuff and the dribbling. Keep working on it. You can watch that as many times as you want. And I, like I said, you will get better. You will improve as you put in the reps, as you do more and more of the repetitions. We're now going to do what is everybody's favorite, and that is shooting the basketball. And so what, what we like to use is the acronym BEEF. Do you know how to spell BEEF? You maybe you like to eat BEEF. Here it is, B-E-E-F. And each of those letters stands for something. And the first is balance. And so when you shoot, you want to have your feet a little bit wider than shoulder width apart, you're bending at the knee, not at the back, and you have a good balance. You're not leaning forward, you're not leaning back, side to side, you're right here, all right? So balance is key. And then second is eyes. 
you can't shoot the basketball at the basket if you're not looking at the basket. So one thing that coaches will teach kids, when you get the basketball, it's behind me, the basket is behind me, a teammate passes it to me here, the first thing you do is you square up, you face the basket, your eyes are on the basket. So I'm getting ready to shoot, I have good balance, my eyes are here, and this is a big one for good form, your elbow needs to be underneath, right here. Not out here, that's what a lot of kids try to shoot two-handed, and their elbow's way out here, it needs to be here. And then the, the final F, final letter of F is follow through, and that is this. As I shoot, the last two things to touch the ball are these two fingers, and the ball spins backwards, and my elbow is straight, and my hand is, it, my fingertips are pointing at the floor. And so here's a word picture for you. You picture getting a cookie out of the cookie jar that's setting on top of the refrigerator. So you gotta reach way up and then go inside that cookie jar to get the cookie and that is good form right there. That's good follow through on your shooting. So you're gonna see it, but I'll just show you right here. Um, one way is to keep that elbow in, just put your hand behind your back. You practice good follow through. And then after you, you do that a bit, you put your guide hand up, but it's not touching the ball because all this hand does is keep it in my shooting hand. I'm not shooting two-handed, just one. I'm right-handed, so it's in my right hand. And so I practice that. Again, the guide hand is just there. It's not, it's not shooting. It's just there. And then, finally, when you practice that, now the hand can be there, but it's not, it's not on top of the ball, it's not under the ball, it's just on the side. And notice this, when I follow through, this hand stays the same. I'm just shooting with one hand. And so, again, this is everybody's favorite. Don't worry uh, about making it initially if you're a beginner. Think about good form and you might not have a hoop. And I would say this, the younger you are, the better to have a shorter hoop. So maybe you have a park or somebody has a hoop in their driveway or something and it's short, that's good because you can practice better form that way. And maybe you don't have a hoop, maybe you've got a, a clothes basket or something that you can do in the house and still practice that same form. And honestly, you can practice just in the air with good form, with no basket at all. Because form is key, and then when you do get on a basket, you'll be much more successful. So enjoy this.
Hey guys, I hope you had fun doing the drills and I hope you do them again. And before we go, I just want to give a bit of an introduction of myself and tell you my story. I told you I played basketball and started playing in the seventh grade and played all the way up until um, age 32 was the last time I played in a professional game um, and still play as an old man having fun. But um, you know, in high school and growing, growing up even prior to that, I really kind of wondered, what is life all about? And I saw everybody get excited about something. The kids who were really good at school got excited about good grades or, you know, academics. And people maybe who were excited about doing the wrong thing and maybe, you know, uh, making bad choices and putting things in their body that they shouldn't put in their body. and. I just wondered, hey, what, what is my life all about? And I thought, you know, most people said, well, it's sports, but I knew there was something to, more to get excited about than sports, ultimately. And, because uh, it didn't really provide the meaning of, of life. And about that time, somebody invited me to a, a, a Fellowship of Christian Athletes meeting at my high school. And that's where I was first introduced to this idea of Christianity, is not really a religion it's more of a relationship and that i could have a relationship with god and that was all made possible through him sending his son jesus who lived died and resurrected all on our behalf and that made it possible for me to know god the father and um, i didn't do it instantly but that never left me and more messages came and I remember pretty clearly knowing that this is what my life needs to be about. I've heard the truth and I can't turn my back on it. And so I prayed a prayer. I'm um, sure it was, you know, very unprofessional as a kid and just asking God, forgive me. You know, would you take away my sins? Would you come and live inside of me? Would you be in relationship with me? Would you be my father? And for a kid who grew up without a father, that was just so inviting to me. And um, God answered that. And my life um, has had its ups and downs, but it's always had that meaning because God has provided the meaning. And you know, basketball is a great sport. Um, but when I lay in bed and, and I have a troubled heart, basketball can't fix that. And, you know, basketball has paid for my college. It's helped me travel the world. It's a great sport, but it makes a lousy God. And everything but Jesus himself does makes a lousy God. And I'm very fortunate that when I think of basketball, I think of good things. Um, I think of what it's done for me. Um, I don't think of, oh, I should have made it to the NBA or I should have done this and the coach had a wrong decision. I think good thoughts and I think part of the reason is I let basketball serve me instead of me serving it as a God. I'd never bowed down to it. And God put that foundation in my life. And that's one of the ways that uh, God has really provided meaning for me. And he'll do the same for you. Maybe you've already done that, you've heard that message and uh, you're like, okay, yeah, you prayed a prayer but you haven't really walked in the truth of that. I'm just inviting you to do it, inviting you back. The family's really big. There's a lot of people like me who have bowed their knee, bowed their heart to Jesus, who is King, and say, I'm going to serve you. Thank you for being in relationship with me. And thank you guys for joining me. And I, uh, I, I look forward to hearing the stories of you getting better in basketball and at the same time, walking in, growing in your relationship with Jesus. Hi friends, did you have fun today? I did. Oh good. I hope you learned some exciting skills yeah. and that you keep practicing. Yeah. Also, be sure and work on your memory verse that you learned in huddle time today. And we'll be back here for another exciting day of Good News Across Sports Camp tomorrow. Bye! Bye! <laughs> 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 <laughs>